So we're in the home of the Hezbollah leader. He lives in South Lebanon. The Hezbollah is a Shiite uh, Lebanese organization. They're terrorists. If you're on the other side of the border, they're heroes. If you're on the other, other side of the border. But we're in his home. Uh, I take trips like this often. We had some political leaders. We had some business leaders. We had some pastors with us, about 12 of us with him. And we spent two and a half hours at this point talking about Jesus, as we always do with these guys. And it, it goes well, as it usually does. And it was going well. And he was sharing some things. We were reading the scriptures together, reading the Bible. And uh, then we just kind of were closing up with prayer. And so we gathered around him, laid our hands on him, and we're praying for him. As we're praying, the Hezbollah TV station walks in. And the Hezbollah TV, it's called El Manar, actually goes around the whole Arab world. About 300 million people watch this. And the Hezbollah TV comes in, uh, the guy with the camera, the guy with the microphone, the guy with the light stand. And they see us pray, you know, laying hands on the Hezbollah leader. And they kind of, I think they were surprised wondering if they were trying to kill him or something. And uh, they stopped very quietly when they realized we were praying, and they just paused. And when, they were, when we were done praying, uh, they came up and asked the Hezbollah leader, could we interview the governor that was with us? And the governor looked at me and said, do I want to be on Hezbollah TV? I said, sure, that's not my, I mean, you won't be in politics anymore, but you can do whatever you want. And so he said, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I better not. So the Hezbollah leader said, just interview Carl. He'll, he'll do it. He, does, you know, he always does that. And I've done that quite a few times. And so I said, sure. So I'm just sitting there. The guy with the microphone comes up. He has a microphone just like this. And he goes like this. A little red flashing light goes on the camera. And the guy with the light holding the light. I found out later it was a live feed. I didn't know that at the time. It would have been nice to know that at the time, but little detail. And he says, uh, we're here with uh, uh, Mr. Carl. I don't really have a title, so I become Mr. very quickly. Mr. Carl and his delegation. And uh, Mr. Carl, we'd just like to ask you two questions. Could you please tell us why you love the Hezbollah and hate Israel? <laughs> now, you don't all know me, but just in case you're wondering, I don't love the Hezbollah organization, and I don't hate Israel. Obviously, neither one. So it's a trick question. I'm not very good at this, but as I've been trying to follow Jesus and trying to think like, act like, and sometimes even respond like Jesus, which I maybe got, I'm up to like 0.01%, uh, one of the things I've realized is Jesus does funny things with trick questions. He n either never answers them, or he gives a better question back, or he tells a story that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> we call those parables. So I've been training myself to do things like that. So what I first do, though, is I pray. And the prayer in this kind of a case, uh, the situation goes like this. So I did that, and I mean, in that prayer is a whole thing. It's a thing about help. It's a thing about I'm a knucklehead. I can't believe I'm here once again. How did this happen to me? And, but mostly help. So I did that. I mean, it just kind of comes out spontaneously. I, I gulp. There's, you know, I did that. And then I said what I've trained myself to do in those kind of tricky situations to say, that reminds me of a story Jesus told, which it didn't. <laughs> but... It's not technically a lie, because what you're doing is you're saying it slowly, and you're hoping by the time you get to the word told that you are reminded of a story Jesus told. The key to that is you have to know some stories that Jesus told. We call those parables. So I'm not very bright. I'm not a good memorizer or whatever, but I, there's like just 45, depends how you count, ish, parables. Most of them are really short. I know all of them, and so a few of them would come to my mind easily. So I said that. I went, eh. that reminds me of a story Jesus told. The guy was holding the microphone like this for me. At any time, he could have pulled it back, but he, did, he didn't. And he went like this. When I said, that reminds me of a story Jesus told. He went, like, how could the question tell us why you love uh, Hezbollah and hate Israel? How could that remind you of a story Jesus told? And so I just, and when I said Jesus told, boom, right there, the parable, parable of the good father or the prodigal son came to my mind. Now, that's one of three or four, the Good Samaritan. There's a few that would pop into my mind most likely. So that's kind of a cheat. I love the parable of the good father in Luke 15. And so I just, I said, that reminds me of a story Jesus told. There was this wealthy patriarch that lived just over there. We were in Tyre. The biblical cities of Sidon and Tyre are in modern day Lebanon. We're about 10 miles from the Israeli border. I said, that Jesus told this story just over there, this wealthy patriarch that had two sons. And the younger son, while the dad's still alive, comes to him and asks for his half the, of the inheritance. When I said that, the cameraman is going like this, did this. <laughs> like, what? How, how could the younger son, while the dad's still alive, how could he do that? That's like wishing your father was dead. And then the father gave it to him. He did that again. He kept going back and forth like this quite a lot. How, why would the father give? Oh, that's crazy. And then 
the younger son had lots of money, so then he had lots of friends. And he went off to a foreign land and spent all the money, lost all the money, and then lost all of his friends, and then ended up eating with pigs. When I said pigs, the cameraman guy just went real slow, <laughs> like this. And then he, he never went back to the hole again. You know, he just, I don't even know where the camera was going from there on, because he was, what, there's pigs in the story. Muslims don't do pigs like Jews didn't and don't do pigs. There's a younger son asking for his inheritance while the dad's still alive. The younger son, dad's still alive, pigs. At least three things are wrong so far. It's a very strange story. What kind of a story? And you can see the guy with the microphone. I don't know why he didn't pull it back. He's just holding it there. And he has like this shocked look on his face. What kind of a story is this? And I'm just looking at the camera, just going for it. I mean, they asked me to you know, say that. Uh, I mean, it was a trick question. I, I feel like if they give me a trick question, I'm going to give them a trick answer. And so... Uh, and then I carry on with the story. And you know the story. The younger son comes to his senses, uh, as he should, and then starts to rehearse his speech as he goes back home. I mean, it's I mean, obviously not worthy to be called your son anymore. I mean, obviously not worthy to be called your son anymore. But being your servant would be so much better than eating and sleeping and drinking with pigs. So the younger son is walking back home, probably rehearsing this speech. And it appears that the father's been watching for the son because when the father sees the son from a long ways away, he runs to the son. When I said the father runs to the son, the, the guy with the light almost fell over. The guy with the microphone actually went like this. And then, it, he didn't know, it, it like, and then the guy with the camera, he's just not moved and his, his nose is all wrinkled up and he's just staring at me. Like, what? Do, do you know that's the most shocking point of that whole story? Patriarchs don't run. Middle Eastern men don't run. That wasn't supposed to be funny. Um, you know, they have uh, men in those days, and still in these days in the Middle East, have kind of man dresses. I mean, they're dish dashes, kendoras, uh, thobes, or long robes. And so I, I don't know, because I'm not a woman, but I think if you're a lady and you wear a long skirt, it's kind of hard to run in a long skirt, I would imagine. And I have worn the long man skirts, kind of the robes that are very comfortable, by the way. And the only way you can run in them is to hike them up and kind of pull them up to here, which would be an unthinkable shame. I mean, it's actually an unthinkable shame, and no man would ever do that. And no wealthy man of honor would ever run anyway. And he would definitely not run with a skirt hang, uh, you know, hiked up. It's all wrong. There's no chance. And so, but he does that. The father runs down the road. And I did this on the, on the TV. I said, and the father ran to the son. And when I was doing this, and I'm sure when Jesus told this story 2,000 years ago, all the hearers then and the Hezbollah hearers now were thinking, oh, that's good. Justice. The father will kill the son. Obviously. Obviously you kill the son. The son is shamed. Do you understand? You don't understand. You're Americans, mostly. And Canadians, you know, it's all the same. So... Canadians love it when you say that, by the way. So, I mean, you, you have to kill. You have to kill. The only way to restore honor to the shamed family is to kill the one who has shamed the family. We don't get that. That sounds horrific to us. I'm not saying it's good, but it's the culture then and now of the Middle East. So for sure, the father would run down and kill the son, thus restoring honor to the name of the family who was shamed. But he doesn't do that. He hugs the son, and he wraps a new robe, a robe around his shoulders, and he puts a ring, ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and he brings the son back home. And then everybody then and on TV that day are saying, oh, it's a very clever father. He brings his son back home to the village to kill him because you got to kill the son. The younger, the younger son, I mean, how is that possible? And then the father was so foolish to give him the money, and then he squandered it, and now he comes back home this is good. He'll kill the son in front of the whole village. That is the right thing to do. That's called justice, then and now. And it's good. It's right. Kill the son. And he brought the son back home, and he threw a party. And so I said to the Hezbollah TV, that's why we're here. Because the God we serve, serve through his parties for sinners. And I stopped, and the guy, the guy pulled the microphone back, and he said this. He went, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, which is, oh God, oh God, oh God. <laughs> I think he's probably thinking, I'm going to lose my job. And he went like this, and the little light went off in the camera. 
And he just, he put the microphone down. I'm just sitting there. He walked around the corner and he said to the Hezbollah leader, who was talking to my governor friend, he said, I told Mr. Carl to tell us why he loved the Hezbollah and hate Israel, but he didn't do that. And the Hezbollah leader said, what did he say? And he goes, he just told the story about Jesus. And the Hezbollah leader said to the cameraman, it's Carl. What did you think he was going to say? <laughs> and then the Hezbollah leader leaned behind the governor and went like this to me. That's the power of a parable.